Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Indigenous communities lead protests against resource exploitation in Mexico. Activists denounce UK government commission report denying systemic racism. Filipino police arrest three activists amid ongoing crackdown. And in our video section, we take a look at the anti-racism protests in solidarity with the Asian community in the US. Indigenous communities are fighting to protect natural water reserves in the Puebla region of Mexico. Since March 22nd, residents have been holding protests against the French-owned Bonafont company. As reported by La Jornada de Oriente, the company's actions have led to an acute scarcity of groundwater in the region. According to workers, the company has extracted over 1,400,000 litres of water from the Iztaccíhuatl volcano area every day for the past 25 years. Moreover, the demand for jugs and purification systems also grew by 30% after COVID was declared a health emergency. This meant that workers were forced to work for up to three shifts for 24 hours. Local residents have also claimed that the company is operating a clandestine well without authorization. They have demanded that the permit from the National Water Commission be displayed. As reported by La Escuerda Diario, around 90 wells supplying drinking water to 5,000 families in the area. However, most of these have now dried up due to the extractions carried out by Bonafont. People have accused the company of not providing water to people in, even in conditions of drought. According to the National Water Commission, 83.27% of Mexico's territory was in some stage of drought during the first half of March. Hundreds of residents held sit-in demonstrations outside the Bonafont facilities in the Puebla region last week. 60% of them were women. The protest was successful in leading to stoppages in Bonafont's activities. Residents also reported that the water levels in the community wells rose within three days. The struggle also spread to other communities in the region. People are demanding that municipal and state authorities inspect the area. They have also demanded that the facilities be shut down. Communities have stated that their struggle will continue until these demands are met. For our next story, we go to the UK where a new report on systemic racism has been met with widespread outrage. The report was published by the Commission on Race and Ethnic Disparities on March 31st. The government-appointed body has argued that there is no evidence of actual institutional racism in the country. While acknowledging the existence of racism, the report also concludes that the UK can be a model for other white-majority countries. Activists, activists have condemned the report as a, quote, utter whitewash and an act of gaslighting. They have argued that the report downplays social, health-related and economic inequalities among racial and ethnic groups. The report also argues that the impediments and disparities which exist are varied and very few of them are directly to do with racism. Factors such as geography and socioeconomic background are considered to have more of an impact on life chances than racism. The report was commissioned by the Conservative government following the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. Black Lives Matter UK has argued that the report has not addressed disproportionalities in education and criminal justice. Black people in England and Wales are nine times more likely to be imprisoned. As reported by The Guardian, exclusion rates for black Caribbean students in some schools are up to six times higher as compared to their white peers. Black Lives Matter UK has also highlighted Eurocentrism and censorship in curriculums and attainment gaps in higher education. Three labor activists were arrested by police in the Philippines on March 30th. KMP Vice Chairperson and AMGL leader Joseph Kanlas were arrested in the Pampanga province. As reported by Rappler, he was served with an arrest warrant and then arrested after the supposed discovery of a gun in his office. The AMGL office in Sapang Maisak was reportedly also raided. In a simultaneous raid, a member of the Karapatan Central Luzon and the chairperson of the Bayan Central Luzon were also arrested. Both stated that the police had planted ev evidence as cause for their arrest. Groups including the Kilosang Mayo Uno have highlighted that the raids are taking place in the northern Philippines. This is the export processing belt where trade unions form a strong political bloc. Tuesday's arrest took place only a few weeks after the deadly bloody Sunday raids in the Kalabarzon region. At least nine people were killed and six were arrested in a joint raid by the police and armed services. Among those arrested and killed were prominent social leaders and activists. Police claimed that they had gone there to serve warrants for loose firearms and illegal possession of explosive. Reports of Philippines police falsifying evidence were also widely circulated in the aftermath of the so-called drug war campaign. Activists have also stated that the judiciary is being used by the government to crack down on dissent. 
This has taken the form of blanket search warrants being issued by the lower judiciary. This, coupled with the government's practice of red tagging, have led to fatal consequences for activists and indigenous communities in the Philippines. And in a final story, we go to the United States, which has been witnessing widespread protests against anti-Asian racism and violence. Mobilizations grew following the horrific massacre of eight people in the state of Georgia on March 16th. The attack took place at a time when the country was witnessing a rise in violence and discrimination against Asian people. Nearly 3,800 hate incidents were reported to the Stop AAPI Hate Coalition between March 2020 and February 2021. Here is a video feature on the protests held this week. seeing in the media is that this is Donald Trump's fault and that Donald Trump obviously uh, blamed the coronavirus on China. He called it the China virus. He called it the Kung flu, all these horrible things. Um, and that certainly stoked a lot of anti-Asian racism in the United States. Of course, none of these claims are true. But, you know, to chalk it up just to this one thing is just an, it's an incomplete picture. Uh, Donald Trump was attacking China. He was attacking Asian people before coronavirus. He's been attacking it, uh, Asian people throughout his administration. And then, you know, if you look at the larger picture, it's really like the United States has been attacking China for decades now. Um, you know, you could say many decades. You could say since 1949, it's been attacking China. So what we really wanted to point out is that this is not just about Donald Trump. It's not just about, um, you know, white male shooters, which is another huge problem in the United States. But it's also the reason these hate crimes, uh, uh, this larger phenomenon of Asian anti-Asian hate crimes is happening um, is not just because of these, you know, one or two factors. It's because of this Cold War with China. It's about this, uh, these uh, war drums banging uh, against China. And what we really wanted to demonstrate is that the United States has been talking about, has been aggressively trying to encircle, has been demonizing, has been trying to ostracize China uh, because China is beginning, is is really challenging the U.S.'s position as the world superpower, as the unquestioned world superpower. China's economy, for example, is set to overtake the size of the U.S. economy in terms of GDP by 2028. But this is a huge challenge to the United States, not just because, you know, the U.S. wants its phone manufacturers out in front. It's aware that this is, you know, just one part of a larger trend, which is that the Chinese economy, the Chinese, uh, you know, nation is really going to overshadow and overtake the United States in a, in a lot of not just economic, but also political and diplomatic spheres. 
So the United States is afraid of this. And, you know, their their plan really is to attack China, to demonize China and to ostracize China before they have a chance to really, you know, uh, change the the framework and the layout of the global system. And that's all the time we have for this episode of the International Day Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesespy.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.